Okay. Looking like your favorite auntie. So uh, <laughs> I would start with a song okay. before we start the podcast. And it could be Ooh, any. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like a new artist you're listening to, or like anything Should from I have the my last phone night. Today? Or do you want your phone? Uh, well, that's where my new artists are. Go, go ahead, yeah, go grab it. Okay, I can go get it. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, party at the top and, uh, wait. Party at the bottom. Business at the top, party at the bottom. My mom lets her big one, so oh, I was like, mine now. Yeah. Okay. Bet. <gasps> Did you record all that? Oh, yeah. No, my bow is out. It's fine. I'll cut it. Okay. I was like, I'll do a sensor. They're not ready. For Actually, that. I'll do a sensor. That would be Yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, nice recommendation. Oh, are we going to play it? You're going to yeah. play it? Okay, yeah. let me get it. This one, I'll watch. Let me fix my side bang. Alright, so we're listening to the Rubber Ruber. This one, we don't know it's got two Rubber music. It's spelled like rubber, could be Ruber. Oh, but you know, we'll tag it. That way you'll know. I forgot, you know. Language, you can pronounce things anyway. You want to show. I still love it. Yeah, I'm a little jam. Yeah, they're really big fans. If you have a sound that's coming out, it's nice. Oh, it matches. No, not at all. That's why it's nice. It's something in common. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that, like, in the music industry, there's too many people trying to replicate each other? Yeah, there's not. Besides, we're playing right now. There's, there's like, there's casual artists out here, but, like, at this point, everybody's just trying to dance or just trying to get a track out. And it is the same thing. That's why everybody has a Spotify or a SoundCloud because you have your own specific taste in like music. Gotcha. Plus, it, it, I'm kind of nineties kid, so genre wise, like they don't play half the stuff I would like. You know, people say like, shit. That's fine. I got it. I was like, is this PC friendly? No, I don't know. PC. Oh, oh, political correct. Yeah, yes, or par- parental control. Oh, friendly. PC, got it. PC. Got it. <laughs> Um, this is rated M for mature. Oh, okay, great. So, okay. uh, feel free. I'm not mature, so to, good. You know, say as you please. <laughs> Do as I want. Uh, so, um, tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself. By the way, hold on, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Every time I try to do something good, you're just like, yeah, we're doing something. My bad. <laughs> I um, the interview. <laughs> so, uh, this is my best friend, uh, Tay Watts. Yeah, I don't give my birth name. Okay, good. I'm so glad it didn't come out of my mouth. Um, I didn't know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm not wanting anywhere, but I'm not, I'm not trying to have that information out. We live in a <laughs> pandemic type area. I need you six Facebooks away from me. Um, I'm a comedian entrepreneur. Uh, this says it all, right? This says it all. I'm a comedian entrepreneur. That means I do a gang of shit that everybody else in LA does. I write, I dance. I choreograph. No, that's my other. That's my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. I can do that choreographing in the kitchen or in the bedroom if you catch my drift. But um, other than that, I'm out here just trying to make the money and, and make the world a little bit better of a place. How would you say you're making the world a better place? By actually helping. I mean, it's a subjective type of help. <laughs> it's not needed or suggested. It's an option. <laughs> it's an option. Any type of thing that I kind of have found myself the way I love to do like including comedy has been like an act of giving to give something um <laughs> just like this wind is giving me life <laughs> it gives something you know um I have a lots of side ventures of course as we all do seven streams of income because you can't live in LA without having 15 jobs <laughs> so <laughs> it makes sense you know but each of those things they give me something like it helps to give out something else and uh Honestly, I'm trying to get my words out as quickly and as fast as possible. Oh. Solo album coming out. Oh, you mean like your words in any in, in multiple any avenues? Sense. I just think people need to hear it. Yeah, this is a little bit of vanity. Yeah. But it's a good type of vanity. I need you to hear it, so I just want you to have some options to think about. Like I said, not suggested or selected. <laughs> it's just an option of the uh, of these to open up. What do you feel like you give to? the world what what is it that your words speak I, I would say a different perspective I think I'm an oddity in itself and I think oddities are rare nowadays. what's the definition of oddity it's just like a strange person it's something 
peculiar, not of the same realm. I mean, gotcha. I like before people started names and things like sis and this and that. I was just Tay, and I always wanted to be magical. You know what I mean? And as I've kind of grown up, I just understand now so much of how everything works and the connectivity and everything that I already am magical and it's just about being able to kind of spread that out as subjective as it may be <laughs> you are magical yeah I'm trying to get out there I don't like the term sis either please just call me Keontae or lady born lady lady born that could be a song lady gaga lady gaga that's, that's, that's not song. saying that you weren't born as a lady I'm just saying like frontal lady born I'm from the 80s, might not be correct. So we have a backlash from Twitter. What do you think? What do you think? Um, so I don't have a Twitter. Go ahead and look me up right all you want. I you don't have a it. Twitter? No. I oh. wouldn't want to tweet. I tweet from my mouth. It's because you want Twitter. people to hear it. Yeah, right here. From your mouth. Yeah, okay, got it. As opposed to people looking back and seeing receipts when I was mighty dumb, oh, yeah. exhausted. Don't leave receipts. Don't leave this dumb receipts. we're teaching you here. Don't, don't leave, leave dumb, dumb receipts. Dumb receipts. What are you going to tell somebody you hate all black people? We already fucking know. Now your Twitter says it. Now they just have an account of your hatred. Did you see? Um, <laughs> it's the stupidest thing. I don't have a Twitter, so all the hate I have comes out of my mouth, right at you, and I leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you see the controversy with uh, the baby? I did. I definitely did. Um, ooh, earring. ADHD is real, kids. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to touch that situation. Uh, I get both sides. I think you're allowed to have a view. I think you, if, if you're going to allow a whole bunch of KKK and Nazi to spew a whole bunch of hate for free and have somebody want to have the same type of bigoted idea, yeah, we're supposed to change this, but you got to let people kind of come into that in their own way. And I feel like if you're going to do one to one, then you should do one to all. Because I've heard multiple people say dumb stuff about races, cultures, class, and and have it be a slip up of their ignorance and as opposed to it be a teaching lesson it's always a trying to like oh you're stupid and it's like yeah i mean should you lose money should you lose costs and things yeah you said something very derogatory towards a whole community of people yeah. you know what i mean as as part of that community as bisexual we do, as a whole community of people doesn't mean all of that's true but like that's his own realm to come through yeah you're not going to push somebody out of out of the closet too early out there because you can push somebody out of their own bigotry yeah, I mean, should we have stopped a lot of things of uh, hatred wise? Yeah. yeah, but I think in this day and age, and like he said it live, I think he had his own personal view of things. It's stupid. We can acknowledge his I mean, stupidity. I don't know if anyone ever has actually like addressed him one on one to to see what he truly understands and how um, negative the sentence, like what he stated, how it it's not okay. Yeah, no. Like, did anyone talk to him? Does he feel like it, the way he worded it? That's what I'm curious about. Like, did you think that it was? What was your intention behind it? Um, I think, and that, I wonder, did anyone ask that? Is like, is that a conversation we're having, or are we just playing what it, cancel culture? No, his publicist team was like, "Fuck." <laughs> publicist was like, "We can't clean this. We can't clean this. We're like, fucked." Um, but I think he was like, you know what, like. You're a performer, as an in a, sometimes in a performer state, you're just reacting off of the crowd. Would you call that like a fr Freudian slip? Is that what that is? Yeah, right. You just I like let something kind of like, kinda but it's out. not. It's not direct necessarily towards somebody, but it's like out there. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying, yeah, maybe Freudian slip. Yeah, I think he was just in I mean, a performance he mean it that way, but then like in, See, oh, internally, he, I he, think meant he meant it that meant way. It that way. <laughs> yeah. I just think it, it was the wrong <laughs> time and place to ever say that. Yeah, ever. And I think it should be a teaching moment for him. Oh, he learning. He learning with the loss of his money. He learning yeah. what it costs to segregate a whole community. But that's how they play it on you, though. Like, now he's losing this and losing that and stuff. And I'm like, okay, but did you... Nobody's getting on the Queen of England for hating Meghan Markle. Yeah. If that's true, bless up, please. Respect. I still want to come to the country. So you're saying, like, we should teach a, 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 like, teach a lesson. Teach a lesson. Have a conversation. Have a conversation. Yeah, not Have just cancel, 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 oh, whatever, delete all his stuff, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm not with this cancel culture. Mm -hmm. I think I think some things need to be canceled. Really tight jazz pants, canceled. Wait, what? Silver shiny jazz pants on boots with sandals. Let me finish. <laughs> you know what sandals I'm talking about. Um, cancel that. But, like, I, you can't, I'm so tired of cancel culture. Everything is something wrong. People just want to cancel it. It's over. Down in the career. Why can't we just be opposing sides? 
I mean, they're adverse. Yeah. You know, like one side is really bad. Like you're trying to kill baby seed. Yeah, like we shouldn't have a conversation right. about that. Right. It should be a no go. Yeah. But like, if you don't like pink as I do. Yeah. Why didn't you cancel my whole career because I don't feel like they pink? It's an homage to the vaginas. They're all pink. You hate vaginas <laughs> now because it's the craziest no, thing no. oh people make gosh. out of these cancel issues. It's <laughs> bothersome. <laughs> it's bothersome. It's bothersome. Um, do you think that cancel culture has come out of uh, like this society in the younger generations wanting to um, be politically correct and like being? T- I don't. I don't know if I want to say too sensitive, but yeah, um, it. it's sensitive. You know, I, honestly, I think it's part of that is like or want. It's also wanting the uh, wanting the recognition that the things that they were called are not okay. Yeah, right too. Or wanting the understanding that it's not okay that it happened to them, but then in a fifth way that it comes in a validation for yourself. Like you're having to go through that process for yourself. Yeah. And too, honestly, it reminds me a lot. Of, it reminds me of super narky. It's like you're calling in, you know, I don't know if these kids ever heard, like, don't tattle on people. Like, yeah, if you're, there are things you can tattle on. But, like, it's, it's super narky. Snitches get stitches, and that's what it is. We'll talk. I'm not hoodie about that. I'm not me. But that's, that's what it is. You're like, oh, you know, Susan's doing that over there. I'm going to cancel it. Or I'm going to tell on somebody this because this is happening. Like, yeah, but did you think about what's going through you internally for yourself as you're doing that? Or, like, as you're doing that? Or as you're reacting to somebody else on Instagram? you actually have sometimes that happens a lot to you and i i get the initial reaction to have a reaction to somebody else uh-huh. but at the same time i'm like they're not even worth your time like they're stupid enough to be commenting on something like what were you doing at 15 minutes ago to be over here yammering about why you think britney spirit you know like i yeah, mean yeah. there's just all this other extra stuff that we could be doing as opposed to cancel you spent six hours trying to cancel this man over the behind issue yeah attacking you know each mean? other it's gladiator yeah. sports of the of the foam wars baby but yeah it's like the arena this is the biggest arena you will ever have in your life everything goes down in the arena pretty much but what is this uh-oh. what you got on there it's a good. i think this is a wrong number of it is sunday it is sunday uh what was the last thing you said about being in the arena and the phone the phone is the arena it's literally a stage for anybody who wants to have a show and the thing is like now you don't get it really uh asset of what show is good and what show is bad anything is a show now well it's whatever yeah but it's also it's whatever um is uh trending right like yeah what is getting the most views and then that way that's the thing that pops up more that's the thing that you see more then you have clickbait um and that's why people do a lot of controversial things too the content you know the yeah the content, content can be a little controversial back and forth, back and forth. um but in reference to like so everyone's on social media now right but there are a lot of people or at least what you think because this is what i like to believe is that a lot of people are um also beginning to be in touch with themselves and meditate and have self-awareness and understanding do you feel like that area of society is advancing you know when we had like woodstock there was a lot of people right in that during right that time we don't have the connectivity to do that i feel like with this pandemic the thing about woodstock and that you had a large it wasn't just the space it's the amount of people you could fit there the it's the amount of things that could happen there that people would go people were traveling into things we just started having shows and stuff but the the event and stuff is not the same the concept wasn't a whole movement you know mm. what i mean like that was that was a good example of that like yeah people are longing for that I feel like like a lot yeah but it's not the same as um coming together to watch I must I'm gonna throw out Skrillex even though I don't know who watches Skrillex anymore um but like going to watch Skrillex versus going and doing a mass meditation but to some people Skrillex is meditation Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to who everybody said, but it's like if you're if you're if you are doing mass meditation with um, intent and with purpose, to I mean I see what you're saying because you're saying that's someone's meditation. There were so many times that I was going to show. But are a lot of people mindless though? Not all the time. And that thing about when you go to shows like that is the amount of people one the generation of energy the amount forth of just how many people are there Mm -hmm. and two and then a lot of times at least when we went to shows 
not that weird, but like the dubstep or the rave music or the sounds, they were meant to experience things on a whole different like vibe in your head. Like they are yeah. binary, yeah, binary beats typically. So we were experiencing things and unfolding things in like a whole bunch of pattern. Now that necessarily you may not get in that experience. And two, with this pandemic, it's not as close and touchy. Like you wanted to bump into people, you wanted to sit next to people you didn't know. Now you have this whole fear of like, do you have it? Do you not have it? Are you vaxxed? Are you vaxxed? But I still want to be out. Yeah. But I, I don't know. But the people I'm at the festivals to don't really seem so. Uh, and I feel like they're mindless scared. now because they've been so we've been so inside now. It's not like we're going for joy. You're going because you have to get the fuck out. Mm. It's not like, oh yeah, I'm going for the joke. Like you have to get the fuck out to need now. Yeah. It's not just a want. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think is most detrimental in our society? Shit. <laughs> Literally. It's kind of like a, a large one. Um, and <laughs> especially to say like most detrimental, like because you know things, crisis, you know, on all the debt crisis. This crisis, and then I probably approach to war. Is that something that's fixable? Do you think that's something that's fixable? Because I, my I lifetime. not got it. Yeah. Not with the amount of money I have. Even if I were to get to one percent, I'd have to give out most of my wealth to so, just fix a minimal amount. Yeah. But I know this is crazy. If we had all the richest people in the world give out a million dollars, all that one percent, just one. Yeah. Would make a difference. We'd make a difference. We'd make yeah. a gang of difference. Yeah. We'd make not even a million. You could give each person in the entire world a hundred thousand dollars to make a whole difference. Yeah, Super but, easy. It would decrease the, probably the national. Sorry. I don't even know. Like, I, I wouldn't know how much it would decrease it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, we could switch if you want. No, it's okay. Just say this whole. <laughs> I'm a genie in a bottle. You know. Gonna rub, rub me in the right, right way. Um, for a little while, I thought that she said, "Gotta ride me the right way." She probably did in the remix. Gotta rub me the right the way. Demon I version, guess we'll yeah. say <laughs> the demon version. Yeah, we, I've been listening to a lot of songs now, and I've been li- li- really listening to the lyrics and how like guttural they were. Yeah. Do you feel like the music? So there's like conspiracy theorists um, that say like Little Nas, uh, XX, uh, Tenacion, yeah, and like uh, music like that is actually like satanic and you don't know it but it's like secretly because of the effect that it has on your brain waves just like we we're talking about right yeah, same yeah. Way, and, that's why and a lot so of the way that it's created do you think that that's like i think if you're susceptible to those things pain, or yeah do you think definitely. you know do you and also wait i'm gonna add one more to that do you think that um the new music industry because this is gonna is an additive is that the purpose of that music is to keep Control. society in those states of mind or like drugs guns you know violence or whatever in some sense absolutely because music is the great divide i literally connect everything Mm -hmm. like it you can hear one song one place and somebody else will hear at the same time the exact time you know what i mean like it's the same song michael jackson one of those artists that you can kind of touch and timeless and yeah those songs like did change the way that people think or the way that people look at it that's the power that music has always been but music has always been very rhythmic very beats to the like yeah. the kind of like like I said the lateral position of energies in the world. I think it does a whole different stimulating thing to your body. Um, do I? I think it's honestly it's about the same. If you think about like the lyrics now and lyrics, it's just differently delivered. Yeah, Get not about time age, grind. but just even. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, even I, some of the I music. Don't know. I don't know how much of the night is it. I mean, like, I mean, they said kids, like, like rock like, bands were saying this, so I was like, this oh, point, that's right. Yeah. Everything is just like what they don't want you to listen to at this time, and maybe it is, but like. I really do think you have to be more susceptible to those things. Like, you have to have an opening for it. You have to be going through some things. Yeah. You have to be traumatic. Like, just, like, an expression it's, it's of... Dependent on your brain. Confusion, and your brain yeah, and how it, how it intakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I listen to... I can listen to Kill, Kill, Kill. <laughs> I watch horror movies every day. <laughs> she does. She does watch horror I, I movies do, every I day. I start my mornings. <laughs> and this means... With, like, motivation. <laughs> and horror. <laughs> motivation and, like, certain good movies. Quick documentary in there. Slip a little learning and finish off with some Disney at night or some Bubba Burgers. So I can call it a night. <laughs> yeah, so when we have, when we share like a TV, horror movies it's everywhere. Like, and they're like the good ones. So they're like super gruesome. Because I'm like, I want to know why he got broken to my house I'm trying to prepare myself. Uh, she lives with her. It could be an anxiety, but I'm like, nah, I just stay ready. I ain't got. Was ready. That werewolf popped up. Psh, silver. Was ready. Oh my god, fireworks went off last night. And, um, so, my so dog right is here to react as well. So imagine right here is the window of the bedroom, and then there's another window right here, and it's like firework. <laughs> <laughs> on both sides. 
was like, oh. I was ready to react at both spots. I like, I don't know if I got bad news, but I would have done a full split. Yeah. She's got a pair of, um, what do you call them? They're, Hand scissors, but they're gardening are scissors. Gardening shears. Yeah, there we go. Gardening shears. But he's trait, yeah. Um, and when she hears anything abnormal, which is like everything, uh, I have excellent hearing. That's why she's there with the shears. Like, do I need these? Yeah, I'm glad you don't walk out with them in your hand because yeah. if I was walking up the stairs, like they're in a position. No, I am very good with everything. Yeah. So that's one thing my grandmother taught me. <laughs> yeah, <'cause> I'm <laughs> <laughs> I really um, quick my reflexes like and I feel like people are like oh you don't have to be hyper scared of things but I feel like if you've already prepared yourself for something like if somebody's coming up the stairs I'm on the third floor and unfortunately I can't get down Chrissy's gone lord have mercy I can't save honey they got people in the animals first I gotta block this door because this fool's fucking coming I don't know so I'm like, I've already positioned my shit in my room so I gotta use my mom's strength because now I have a puppy <laughs> You know, to block my door, I just don't have a rope ladder yet that I've finished making to get out my window. Yeah, anyone nowadays, because this is what I used to do. <laughs> Back in the day, it, you know, as a 90s kid, tie sheets, sheets together. But they gotta be and like, I actually went down a window, second floor. That was be scary as really shit. really tight on your knots. Like, they gotta be like Girl Scout or Boy yeah. Scout knots. <laughs> do That's people why. do Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts there anymore? Because I feel like there's too many. They don't anymore, but if you... All right, Eagle Scott, you're probably a serial killer, so watch out. <laughs> I don't know what the data shows, so just do some research. Don't know what the data shows. These are all <laughs> options, like I said. <laughs> um, and, and, and with that being said, I think it's important that people don't take things as a definitive. Yeah. Um, whenever I am approached or given, like, information, I'm more like, all right, let me go look it up. Let me go see what you see. Uh, so that way you can base your own opinion. Um, I think that's a really good idea because I'm highly gullible. I believe you. And because I got no, I, I'm one of the people that's like, I genuinely think you probably tell me no lies until you tell me lies. And yet I still don't trust people. You can see why. So go help people lie. <laughs> you can see why. And I'm empathic too. And you'd be like, don't you know? And I was like, I'm over for the best, man. I'm trying to read out the right race section, you know what I mean? Just got the board. Um, th three goals that you have for the end of the year. Get out my EP, solo EP. I'm going solo. Solo. Really excited about that. Um, finish one of the books that I am working on. I have it online. Um, and of course, honestly, I really want to get all these um, side projects like in the lock and positioned in my time slot and my life perfectly so i can just be on a consistent Unloaded. flow yeah i'm just like boom 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 like it's like okay 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 and i'm almost there i really am i really am i feel like you know we work independently from home and it's it's so much more beneficial for me to manage my time but i really also value my time so because i work from home i do what i want now but also now the engage for me to make more and to do more is there because if you if you don't do it your business will fail and there's nobody really else to blame but yourself which is hard it's a lot of stress it's the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur for me actually it's like what would i avoided being an entrepreneur is because now I feel like I have the weight of failure. Yeah. Like it's 100%. all on me, right? So it's so much easier to take on other people's projects and be successful for them because mm -hmm. um, they already have an expectation of you and you can exceed that expectation, you know, greatly. But when you are put in a position to reach those expectations for yourself, it's you know, hard. It's yeah. harder. It's not hard, it's just harder. And then you, you really are building it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're taking all of the time that you have in your life to build something like a baby, you know, up from scratch. And, like, I spend more time working independently than I ever did working the night side. And I was working, like, 50 hours, 60 Same. hours a week. Yeah. I work more than that now working for myself than I ever did. But I'm also the happiest I've ever been. And I've actually, surprisingly, believe I have goals, miracles, and downsides. <laughs> I've... I've actually gained more in terms of what I financially that I thought I was going to this year and that was just a surprise mess. I'm aiming for the start. It's not the end of the year yet, it's still more optimism. <laughs> fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter wins, baby. You know who we are. Winners. <laughs> Come back. Come back. Um, <laughs> then we think of L seven weenie. Yeah. The winners. Um, but I love it. I really do. I really do. 
what is um this might be vague too i don't know but what is uh what is happiness to you like what is that what does that um what does that feel like i think finishing just well like I know it's crazy, but like sometimes the happy times I am right now just breathing next to my dog, like, and I can take the time to do that. I yeah. want that feeling all the time on the beach. Yeah. And that's not me saying like I want. I would rather oh, just the buy. Freedom. It's peace. I want the sustainability of myself, like yeah. not have to worry, and then I want to end as peacefully as I came in, which is unrememberable because you don't really kind of remember your entry. I just wanna, but I want to leave a, a legacy. That's happiness to me. I'm not really worried necessarily about the means to an end because we all go at some time I, my greatest fear honestly is not finishing before I've done the rest of the things I need to do it's a painstaking I think someone um well so I'm gonna agree with you like really I wanted to feel like that sense of freedom and but for me it's like the peace that comes along with that which is what you're saying like that's what happiness feels like yeah. right um and then someone told me today like we think about we think about life so much but we never think about death yeah. And so I thought that was um, kind of refreshing that you added in there that when you go, you know, how you want to go, but also leaving a legacy. So you so you thought about death. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my, I thought about this since I was little. Like the pain, like the beginning of time and the end of time and those moments in between. Mm -hmm. Like if you really sit there and you think about those things, it'll, it'll, it'll unlock your brain. It really will. I think about death jarringly. Like, in a sense and not in a fear of it because it's not a fear of it is a sense of like honestly i can't wait to go back to the stars and the connectivity of, of just being everything all yeah. at once i think it's be great not like a group orgy but like a sense of home mm -hmm. and you can get that in your soul but there is a sense of being back within what we were mm -hmm. i you think know? understanding like that you do die and um like you said reflecting on that makes you makes the things that you do in your everyday less important in some shape or form depending mm -hmm. on how you look at it but it's like if because if you grown up and you think that you're nine to five and these things these just kind of mundane things that aren't fulfilling your happiness then i mean life is not as enjoyable I, I, no, it's not. and if you don't think about death then you get towards death and you're like oh shit then you have you know um what do, you, what do you call it? Guilt? Regret. Remor regret. Yeah. yeah. Regret, and what regret for not making those decisions that you should have made when you were, you know, 30, 20, whatever. Whatever it is. Um, yeah, so. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of regret and decisions that you don't make, that you don't, you know, having the choices you don't take are the ones you never know. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but that's still holding on to the present. I mean, the past. Yeah. So you can't move forward if you continue to hold on to the past. Yeah, but I think past is also very important relevant to your, your yeah future. of course your awareness yeah. of it you know what I mean? yeah of where you've been and where you don't want to go again yeah and the directness of where you want to go i've also found too this year like saying what i want and then doing it has a whole nother meaning yeah and then just doing it and like the act of doing it and the fulfillment of those things mm -hmm. like knocking it off the big list getting in the studio making sure i have a couple consistent shows um even with this new little thing I do psychic like empathic stuff and it's it was little at first and this is, but I really enjoyed it yeah. I really really enjoyed it and it was like I'm not doing so much but like that's adding to somebody else's day and it was mm -hmm. really nice and like maybe nobody has it's a perspective like a different sense of I say that and unfortunately I'm, I have no filter or sense <laughs> um so sometimes I say things I do have a I have no filter but very nice tact i would say that so it's nice to be able to give that out especially when i'm like oh nobody said that to you honey no my sister my mom say all the time my aunt too so i appreciate it mm. if there is um one thing if there is one thing I'm gonna leave this super open. If there's one thing that you'd wanna uh, share, like leave, let's, we'll leave the, you know, end of our conversation with, what is it that you wanna leave with? Um, 
when we were two Oh, make yeah. it. You can't make millions for yourself making millions for somebody else. And that's not to say that that's the most important thing, but just know that like you can continue to be doing something for somebody else, even like at a time somebody worked for Mark Zuckerberg, but if you have a different idea, a different path, like you can have the same amount and be somebody else wholly Equivalent different. or greater. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't learn that until I lost a job that was really important to me because I was like, whoa, what else do I have? And I'm gonna leave you with this. So I think a lot of people think when you're like, you're getting down and you're dead and like you've gone through your worst like what is rock bottom like how to get up from that i took a long time to figure out what i needed to do to get out of that rut after i lost that job and i really kind of reverted back to like a julius caesar i read a lot of like uh, greek and roman plays and like i like a lot of philosophers so um as he's dying he pretty much says and you too to his best friend and he gives up and that's when he like, and he fought off most of <laughs> the Colosseum or Rome or whatever when he was having his meeting for his final death. He fought off most of them until he saw his best friend and there he gave up. And I was like, you know, there's one very big difference that I have in this moment is like, I'm still alive. Like I have, I, I may have been stabbed in the front by somebody like I was trusted or I may have opportunity. I, I'm still alive. Yeah. Like I'm still the here. whole, I'm the whole, the whole opportunity that the whole world is, yeah. is open to me. Yeah. So that's, I think that's why I can leave it. Like, you can have nothing, yeah, literally nothing been, been taken from you or been forgotten about. And if you're still breathing, you have something to go for. Yeah. So don't yeah. limit yourself. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Fulfill your full capacity. And if not, smoke all day a week. You could do both. Uh huh. I do both. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um,. My step brother has his own business and he smokes weed every day, all day, and he's so happy. We won't he's so tell happy. you which brother though. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. Good, thank you. On your show. Should be talking to the camera the whole time. Goodbye. I'm talking to Manson right here. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll have another guest on next week, and um, you know, I forgot to start off with, you know, welcome to the den. I haven't decided if that's, that's Welcome that. Welcome to the den. <laughs> Sounds like a pussy lore. Uh, <laughs> a um, pussy in the air. So you uh, wait, I don't forgot what I get. Christina Morales' den. I don't know. Christina Morales' corner. CM's CM CM corner. Christina's CM corner. Den. Christina's den. CM donuts. No. Um, Come see me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a donut name. Um, Come see me tonight. It's got milk in the middle. Bye, guys.